Yo, what's going on, guys? And today we are doing the Orlando Magic off-season preview, primer, whatever you priorities, whatever you want to call it. Before we start today's video, in two weeks I'll do my prediction. Not even two weeks, in like a week because the literally next week is the lottery. So after the lottery, we'll start doing my predictions for every single team that is, you know, already eliminated. What we think they're going to do in the draft, and you know what they're going to do in the offseason. But your opinions will help me form those predictions. So before we start today's video, hit that like and subscribe button and comment who you think the Orlando Magic will do. So let's get right to it. So basically, this is a pivotal offseason because we got to take the next step. Okay, Paul Bancaro was playing too much hero ball this year, and I think no offense to Franz Wagner, I love Franz Wagner. But I think we can all agree, and I'm an Orlando Magic fan myself. I lived between the ages of four and nine in the greater Orlando area. All right, I got to see Dwight Howard, Hito Turkaloop, Nikhil Petrus, Adonna Foyle, all right, and Jameer Nielsen, Jameer Nielsen, Marcin Gortat. I mean, I, I interviewed Marcin Gortat like a, a few months back. It was a child, like a dream come true because then I moved to Baltimore and he played for the Wizards. But either way, so for the Magic, they I think Franz is more of a third option than a second option. And that's why we're hearing the Paul George rumors. That's why we're hearing the Clay Thompson rumors. Because I think they're going to be looking for a true, true second off option. Like, I have nothing against Franz. I think Franz on a championship team is a third or fourth option. That is no, like, shame to him. He's a great player. I just think we're realizing that, okay, Paolo Bancaro is like an MVP, future MVP candidate, possibly. And this team is really good at defense. Jalen Suggs, like this Marcus Smart, Drew Holiday type guy. And then we got we got guys, uh, you know, in the bench. So let's just talk about what needs to be addressed this offseason for Orlando and how can we improve. All right. So moving forward with the rest of this, let's talk about what the Orlando Magic need to do. For me, when I look at this Magic squad, I think they're a team that, all right. Markel Fultz is probably leaving, and this is a team that they're trying to kind of do what the Houston Rockets were able to do and take that jump into being, well, not like the, they're in a better position than the Houston Rockets, but take that jump of going from a young team to a team with a decent bit of veteran experience. I think that's what they want to do. Go out, use some of that cap space. That's why we've heard almost every good vet that might be available linked to the Orlando Magic because this is a, a squad that really could go from a first round exit this year to a team that maybe has an MVP candidate in Paulo Bancaro if everything goes correctly. So they have the 18th pick and I think this year that's a pick that they're going to look at like Jared McCain, Johnny Furphy, Ryan Dunn, Kevin McCuller, maybe a Tijan Saloon. You know, I think those are all guys that they're going to look at. I don't think really they're maybe a Devin Carter. I think they're good at the point guard position, right? May, they'll, I think if they want to address point guards, they would get go out and get a savvy vet. Maybe they do go out and overpay for a Tyus Jones. But right now, they went 47-35. I think with the 18th pick, they'll go out and get a shooter or some defense or just a wing player. And then with the 47 pick, if they keep it, maybe get a backup center to replace Goga. Now, Goga is an unrestricted free agent. So is Markel Fultz. They have a team option on Joe Ingles and Mo Wagner. I expect Fultz and Goga to leave. Joe Ingles and Mo Wagner, I think their options will be picked up. Chumo KK is a restricted, restricted free agent. I expect him to leave. Kavon Harris, Trevin Queen, and Admiral Schofield are guys that are restrictive free agents and I think they're the type of guys that we will probably see brought back on two ways and if they, I think Schofield might not be able to do a two-way anymore so maybe he'll give a, a non-guaranteed deal to come compete for a spot in training camp but this was a team that exceeded expectations winning 47 games a 13 win improvement from last season and that's a 25 game improvement from 21 to 22 the fourth youngest roster during the regular season ranked third in defensive efficiency and seventh in winning percentage in games decided in the clutch though obviously the you know the huge improvements they made this regular season are going to be overshadowed by the first round exit even though it was a seven game series i think in that series we learned that paul vancaro is playing too much hero ball 
but he can be the team can be really good if they give him a, a natural second option and that Franz Wagner might be a third or fourth option on a championship team and Orlando is obviously evaluating this team their offensive struggles carried over to the playoffs the Magic ranked 22nd in offensive efficiency and 24th in three-point shooting in the regular season. They were the only playoff team that ranked bottom 10 in shooting from D. And obviously, moving forward, I think they're, you know, we need to look at the roster and be very cautious and very targeted in their approach. And the Magic have 11 players under contract with Paulo Mancaro, and they are one of three playoff teams, OKC and the Philadelphia 76ers are the only ones that are going to have significant cap space this offseason. So they have the financial financial flexibility to improve their team via free agency or through possible trades. The Magic have five tradable first-round picks and no player on the roster earning more than $17 million. The Magic ranked bottom three in payroll in the past three seasons, and even with 11 players under contract, they can still create $35 million in cap space. And that projection takes into account them picking up the team options of Mo Wagner and Jonathan Isaac, or I mean, Mo Wagner and Joe Ingles, while also keeping Jonathan Isaac's 17.4 million non-guaranteed salary on the books. They have until the 29th to pick up Ingles and Wagner's contracts, and they have until the, around the same time for to wait to decide if they want to keep Jonathan Isaac because his contract does eventually become guaranteed. Now, the Magic will likely have $8 million in mid-level exception and the second round exception available to this to them. Now, Jalen Sucks has become like a Marcus Smart, Drew Holiday-esque point guard, so they're probably going to extend him. Same with Franz Wagner. So that means in a year or so, those extensions are going to hit the books. And then in two years, they're going to have to do the Paul Bancaro. So is it even financially worthy for them to go and throw money out to Clay Thompson, Tyus Jones? If it's a short-term deal, sure, but if it's a long one, no. They, if they do a two-year deal plus a third-year option, sure. So that way the books, money comes off the books before Paula's contract kicks in and you're only paying a bunch of money for one year. But look, the thing is, is it's definitely reshaping the offense starts with finding a point guard who can facilitate. Do they believe Anthony Black that is that guy? Do they believe Jalen Suggs is that guy? They need to facilitate that can create easier offensive looks for Ben Caro and Franz Wagner. The Magic ranked 28th in the league with Anthony Black, Markel Fultz, Jalen Suggs, and Cole Anthony running the point guard position. Part cleaning the glass, Suggs and Black ranked in the bottom 25th percentile in assist to usage rate at their position, while Jones ranked in the 95th percentile on the Washington Wizards. The Magic also lack a lot of shooters. The Orlando continued to be one of the worst right three-point shooting teams in the NBA. And it's, that was very obvious during the, the loss to the Cavaliers. No player on the roster shot greater than 40% from three. And starting shooting guard Gary Harris is a free agent. Now, is a free agent. And the list of available shooting guards, Clay Thompson, Malik Monk, Buddy Heal, Gary Trent Jr., and potentially Kennard if this team option isn't picked up. So, obviously, I think there are places that they need to address the roster and that they will be able to address it if they do this correctly. I just think, like, hey, I love Franz Wagner, but he shot... There was a rapidly decline after the All-Star break. And after the All-Star break, he shot 18.5% from three. Suggs is, like, legit the safety of the defense. They need to keep Suggs around. Markel Fultz, I think, is gone. Gary Harris, I think, could be gone. Isaac and Carter, it's interesting. I think they might re-sign Caleb Houston. But look, they need a... I think going out and trying to get a guy like Tyus Jones would be huge. Maybe a D'Angelo Russell. I just... And the depth at center, I think, can be addressed in the draft or getting a Mason Plumley. But the Magic are one of seven teams that have a bunch of trade assets. I think they're in a good position. Uh, I would go out... I would keep it together, but you need to go out and find a true second option that's either going out and getting a Paul George or a Clay Thompson or trading for a guy. Who can they trade for? I don't know who's available, who's a legit second option, but would trading for a Jeremy Grant be worth it? Like packaging Jonathan Isaac, for a, a Jonathan Isaac and somebody else for Jeremy Grant and a pick. 
Would you do that? And then you go get Tyus Jones, and then you fill out the rest of the roster with shooters like Buddy Heald and Gary Trent. I think that could help. What's your thoughts? Let me know. You got you to keep Jalen Suggs. I just feel like mm, Franz Wagner cannot be the second option. And I'm not saying that Jeremy Grant should be the second option. That was just a toss-up. I mean, Paul George is the guy who fits that bill. Clay Thompson, you think he would, but you don't know.